showing early why he's been a force all season. Hard to stop. I mean, he's built like he's 230, but obviously under 175. You mentioned, and uh, playing very hard. You mentioned those Castle Subaru keys to the game. First and 10 again in the shotgun is Crow. That's going to be a procedure penalty against the Crimson Wave. It's going to back him up five to first and 15. On the season, Fleming's been mighty impressive for this Crimson Wave team. He's got 436 yards and five touchdowns. He's averaging over seven yards, oh, nearly seven yards of carry on the season. In motion. And snap taken. Being pushed forward again is Fleming's. Not as much running room there. He'll get one yard up to the 36 yard line. It'll be second and 14. Seems like Bellarmine settling in here. Uh, Crimson Wave, for those of you just joining us, they started with two big plays, a good kickoff return, and then uh, a powerful run by Fleming a couple plays later. And uh, now the Bellarmine looks like they're getting back into speed with a full-on defensive stop right there. Second and 13 again, Crow in the shotgun. We were expecting Blaze Cato, but it's Crow. Crow drops back. He's looking deep. He's got a man going down the left sideline just past the outstretched arm of Robert Shegog. Just a half a step away from catching up to that to get the first score of the game, but incomplete will be third and 13. Catch him sleeping. You know, they ran up the middle three plays in a row and then tried to get him over the top. I love the play call in there. And now if you're head coach Jason Novak, you got to be a little strategic here. Third and 13 at the 36. You probably have two plays to get a first down. So if you can get to a, a fourth and around six would be probably the goal and on the Crimson Wave side. Taking the snap is Crow. Crow fires right, gets that and more. First down, go the Crimson Wave. Inside the 10, inside the five, taken down at the two yard line was Carson Crow. It'll be first and goal, Crimson Wave. Crimson Wave all year have been very explosive on offense and <laughs> there's another explosive play right there. So first and goal set up. Inside the five yard line, looked like they've got him marked down around the two and a half yard line. Crow in the shotgun, he's got Flemings in the pistol behind him. Crow takes the snap, hands to Flemings. Flemings up the middle, hit in the backfield. He's pushing forward, breaks one tackle towards the outside, gets taken down around the one. It'll be second and goal. I wouldn't be surprised if the Crimson Wave, Coach Novak, goes right back to Fleming, the power hog, uh, in, in the trenches right here. At least second and goal, right about the one yard line. Normally he's getting in the habit of saying, here come the big fellows on the goal line. That's not the case here in sprint football. Taking the snap, handing to Fleming. He's again hitting the back field. He's going to lose about two yards. And we'll go back to about third and goal here for the Crimson Wave. First possession of the game here. The Crimson Wave got a great opening kickoff. Return, got the ball all the way inside of Bell Armine territory on the 45 yard line. And that sack on the first play of the game, but since then it's been all forward for the Crimson Wave. Crow in the shotgun, he's got Flemings to his left. He hands to Flemings. No, he keeps it. And again, tackled right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. It'll be fourth down now, an early decision coming for Jason Novak. Looks like they're gonna bring on the uh, field goal team for this one, and uh, that's a good call. Take the easy points while you can get them. So only be the second attempted field goal on the season for the Crimson Wave. I believe that 66 Christian Price out there it is. The only field goal, a 20 yarder, and this will be another 20 yarder. So tying that season long, not a long one, but certainly an important one here to get Crimson Wave on the board. Looked like an offside play, kick is up, and it is good. But I believe we're going to get offsides. And if this moves it inside the two-yard line, does Jason Novak consider going forward, or does he take the points? Looks like that's the decision he's talking over with the referee. 
look, they'll probably get half. Well, they. And yeah, that makes sense. Take the easy points while you can get them. Get back on defense. Get a stop. So with 10-17 left in the first quarter, it's the Crimson Wave that get on the board first. A 20-yard field goal, courtesy of Christian Price. You mentioned big plays to start this game. Uh, Calumet College of St. Joseph, they've been explosive all year, and that drive, that opening drive was explosive, which began with the kickoff return by Elijah Antis. Yeah, uh, Carson, and for Carson Crow, obviously getting the start, only five pass attempts on the season. I believe he had four on that drive alone, so settling into this game for the Crimson Wave. Big game here in the Chicagoland Collegiate, Collegiate Athletic Conference. Winner of this game claims that conference crown, so got a really nice crowd on hand as well. Several hundred here in the stands at Whiting Stadium, or excuse me, it's Ray Galvin Field here on the campus of Whiting. Classic place to call a football game too. You got the freight trains kind of going by throughout the game. It's just got that real Midwest feel. Nice night tonight. Should mention the economy electric heating and cooling Friday night forecast. A perfect 53 degrees clear. The slightest of wind, maybe four or five miles per hour. Friday night forecast brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Keeping you cool in the summer and cozy in the winter. We are coming up shortly on that cozy weather. Had a nice fall though. It's really stretched out here. We've had we had that free, I called it a free summer weekend last weekend. We had a whole weekend in the 70s there. Yeah, well, we, I'm sure many of the Midwesterners will uh, agree with me when I say we'll take warm weather whenever we can get it. And no surprise, 53 degrees in the Midwest. We got people with shorts out here. That is about as Midwest as it comes. Won't lie, I had shorts on earlier in the day as I ran some errands. This kickoff taken at the 25-yard line. Across the 30, up the middle, cutting to the left hash. Now with some space up the outside across the 45. And taken down just shy of the 50. Good return from Tavius Francis, a White House, Tennessee native. The 5'11 freshman saying, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> CCSJ had a good return, and they returned the favor right there on their own. So leading the troops out for the Bellarmine Knights is Dylan Gaw. Go the freshman of seven touchdowns, eight interceptions on the season. And they'll come out in the spread. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Expect to see a fair amount of Brendan Reed and Devin Hendricks from Bellarmine as well in the backfield. Here's the snap up the middle, avoiding one tackler, but not able to get much, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. That was Brendan Reed getting the opening carrying the 5'9 five, five, freshman. Crimson Way is swarming the Bellamine Knights early in this one. Good gang tackling always gets the job done. So it'll be second and 10 here. It's been a little bit of delay and confusion here. There's been some issues with the clock and the scoreboard to our left. Looks like they may have sorted that out. Had some issues kind of throughout that entire first possession. Looks like they've gotten that sorted out. Man in motion coming across. Go takes the snap. He rolls right. Sprint out. He, now he's going to take a look deep. He throws it right to the arms of a crimson wave. But it was a defensive play on offense by Joshua Bivens that prevented the turnover. Yeah, it looks like the uh, uh, Knights quarterback pump faked it. I wasn't sure if he wanted to throw it, and they ended up throwing it anyway. Um, yeah, good, good coaching point there, too. Looked like he might have had six or seven. He pumped that six or seven yards. Instead, looked deep, almost turned the ball over. One of those take what you can get, especially early here. Now you're stuck third and ten, a little bit tougher position. Reed and Hendricks in the backfield now for Bellarmine. It'll be third and ten at the 49, their own 49-yard line. Taking the snap as go. It'll be a tunnel screen, but immediately taken down. Good tackle by Quindarius Davis. And that'll force a punt out of Bellarmine on their first offensive possession. Great four and out early on by the Crimson Wave. We've had three, two powerful returns. We'll see if punt return gives us another one. So 
So fourth and ten. Punt nearly blocked. Decent spiral. This one's going to hit around the 20 and take a favorable Bellarmine bounce. And frankly, a heads up play by Nino Barbosa. If he doesn't field that there and just go to the ground, probably gives up another 10 yards of field position there for the Crimson Wave. Always got to be careful on those bouncing punts, but if you're Barbosa and you're sure you've got it, saves your team about 10 yards. So the second possession on offense coming for the Crimson Wave. On their first one, it was really a commanding drive. They had the one sack, but other than that, a couple of big plays and ultimately had to kick that field goal, but the offense looked good early. So come out, one receiver in the backfield. They got a, an S back just between the, or it looks like maybe just behind the left guard. And it's going to be a false start against the Crimson Wave. Looks like number 84, the Crimson Wave receiver. Jumped off sides, got a little happy right there. Uh. So that'll back them up five here. Now inside their own 10 or the Crimson Wave at their own eight, first and 15. Taking the snap as Crow, he hands off immediately hit his Flemings. And he gets driven backwards. It'll be a loss of four. He ended up in the end zone before progress will get him marked at the four. The Knights have the Crimson Wave on their heels right now, sending some pressure from the linebacker position. And as, you, as we mentioned earlier, with uh, sprint football having the weight limit, I mean, it's almost like you have six linebackers coming at you. A lot of speed on the field in this sprint football league. It'll be second and about 18 now from their own four-year line for the Crimson Wave. Taking the snap, Crow gets out quickly into the, in out of the hands of Barbosa. So that'll bring up third and 18. Not a whole lot in the playbook, especially when you're at your own four-yard line for third and 18. See if they can at least get out from the shadow of their own goal post. Yeah, I could see them handing it off right here, just keeping it, playing it safe, get them some room for the punt. 7.50 to go here in the first quarter. Bellarmine looking to flip the field here. They're going to come on a blitz, rolling right as Crow. He's pressured. He throws it up. Going for a jump ball is Barbosa, and he comes down with it at the 30. A big play on third and 18. Gets the Crimson Wave a first down. Barbosa, he's playing very tall. <laughs> Looks about 5'7". But he doesn't play like, that high. Yeah, playing like he's 6'4 right there. Way to go up and get it, young fella. For a minute there, it looked like another chance for a Bellarmine interception, but it was just Barbosa going up, the stronger player, and bringing it down. Now Crow takes the snap, fakes to Flemings, immediately gets it out to Barbosa. Barbosa breaks one tackle. He's in the open field across the 50, across the 40. Can he be caught? He will. We're going to have a flag behind the play. Finally pushed out of bounds around the 28 yard line. Flag. Looks like they're going to get 84 Shegog on holding down the field. Yeah, Looks to be the call right around the 45 yard line. Looks like where the flag sits right now. That might move the ball back into the Crimson Wave territory, but it'll still be a first down. And Barbosa, a difference maker on offense early here for the Crimson Wave. Another powerful play by. Uh, Nino Barbosa and you wonder I mean that's three plays in a row they targeted him and if that was, might have been the first of the three he could have broke that very quickly very nearly had a lot of open field as he came up the left hash they only first and ten at their own 45 for Kelly McCollege looks like they give him a breather for this one so the Knights defense uh, can breathe a sigh of relief right here I do see Blaze Kano in uniform on the sideline. It is still Carson Crow. He takes the handoff. He gives and some tough sledding for Elijah Antis as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. So 
So it'll be second and 10 again at the 45. This game just halfway through the first quarter, already marked by several big plays. Barbosa going up and getting the ball. Of course, it was a long pass to get Calumet inside the five-yard line, ultimately settled for a field goal. Here's Crows. He rolls left. Looked like it could have been a holding. He gets the ball away. Great pass into Bellarmine territory across the 45, down at the 42. Big play by C.J. Cash. That's a, his second reception on the year. Going for a first down. So into Bellarmine territory again near the Crimson Wave. It'll be Antis again in the backfield next to Crow. Crow takes the snap, hands to Antis. Antis cuts right, cuts left, up the... Right hash nearly gets to the 35. They'll give him the 35, a six yard gain for Antis. Hard running there by Antis. <clears throat> give them a second amount of very short. Ahead of the sticks here for the Crimson Wave after they spent a good portion of the, these first two drives off that sack on the first drive. And then the big loss on the first play of the second drive behind the sticks. Now they're starting to get on schedule. And Crowen taking the snap. He looks right. He's going to roll right. Doesn't have much. He's just going to take what he can get. A flag comes in from the back judge. Let's see if that's some illegal contact down the field. Generally what that tends to be. He got right around back to the line of scrimmage. On the run, as the officials will confer, it will be holding against Bellarmine, and that will get a first down for Calumet College. A huge play as we had third and about four coming up, and said it'll be a first down Crimson Wave. Nevertheless, great hard running by uh, the quarterback right there, Dylan Gaw. Or, my apologies, Car Carson Crow. Yeah. So 4.32 left here in the first quarter. Again, the scoreboard continues to have some issues here in the stadium. I believe it's all right, right, Zach, on our feed? Scoreboard looking good, very good. So first down inside the 30. It'll be a first down at the 25 for the Crimson Wave. Carson Crow commanding this offense early. Not a lot of snaps so far this season. He certainly looks comfortable early. He'll roll to his left. He's looking. He's got a man. Fires just a bit high of Barbosa. He also had Shegog streaking towards the end zone. So it'll be second and ten. Just a beautiful night here for football. Nice light breeze, gives you the feel of fall, but you've got just a long sleeve on. I've got a, a button down and a vest, but no jacket needed tonight for us. Wonderful fall night on a wonderful Saturday. Here's Crow, he's gonna take a shot deep in the end zone, a one-handed catch, that's a touchdown! Shegog brings it in. And the Crimson Wave take a two-score lead. What a great play. Fresh fade Saturdays coming at you. <laughs> Robert Shegog streaked down the far right side. A beautiful throw from Crow. Just dropped it in the basket. And an early 10 to nothing lead, or a nine to nothing pending the extra point here from Christian Price. Not a very good snap, but a good hold, and Price is able to get that through. So a 10 to nothing lead with 4.03 left in the first quarter. We're gonna take a break here. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Did you know? Wow. They'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? 
They offer 23 different deli platters for your party. Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area. Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Welcome back to game night here at Ray Galvin Field. An early 10 to nothing lead for the Calumet College Crimson Wave. They got a field goal on their first offensive possession and then just drove 88 yards, including a beautiful throw from Crow and a, what looked like a one-handed catch in the end zone from Shegog. A 10 to nothing Crimson Wave lead. Crimson Wave playing very well early on in this one. As you mentioned, Shegog, well, the receiving core as a whole for CCSJ, really standing out early. Now here's a bit of a squib kick, bouncing around around the 30, finally picked up by Hendricks, and he's driven into the ground at the 30 by a host of Crimson Wave tacklers. And that's where Bellar Mine will start their second offensive possession. Great kickoff coverage right there. Give the Knights about 70 yards to reach pay dirt. We'll give him an extra. They'll put him at the 31 here. With 358 left in the first quarter. And Dylan Go looking to get some better results here on his second possession. They had to punt their first time. Yeah, one for two on the game so far with only one yard. I'm sure he they made some adjustments on the sideline, and we'll be seeing what they are right here. So shotgun formation, couple of backs in the backfield for Bellar Mine. He's going to fake a handoff and keep it as go. And he's brought down. He maybe falls forward for about a half a yard, but not much. Dylan Gaw, the freshman 5'11 quarterback for this Bellarmine team. Bellarmine Knights out of Louisville. Gaw's going to go under center for the first time in this game. He's got two backs in the backfield. High formation. Old school football right here. He's going to turn, he's going to fake, looks for an inside trap, but the Crimson Wave all over it. That's going to be a loss of a couple. So it's going to be third and long coming up here, but good penetration right up the center. Looked like it was Jake Bodenchak that was leading the charge right in the middle. They tried to get the defense flowing left and came with that trap underneath Isaiah, but the Crimson Wave all over it. Yeah, it's when you, you're struggling to get yards, you look right at your biggest guy or your toughest player. And that's the fullback right there, Brandon Reed for Bellarmine. And Crimson Wave said, no, no, no. So they'll turn to the spread here, back in shotgun is Gaw. Three receivers to his left. He sends a man in motion. That goes Hendricks. Now a bounce two by two. And we're going to get a flag delay of game. So all out of sorts is the Bellarmine offense. It's going to be now third and about 16 for the Knights. Kind of with Gaw there, I didn't realize how quickly that clock went. In fact, that's being kept, I believe, on the field. I don't think the play clock on the field is working. And so it becomes that much more important, I'm sure, in, in high school. I know Isaiah, he's coaching high school with not all schools have those clocks where you got to keep your eye on that back judge. Yeah. Who's going to give you that five second countdown at the end of the clock? And usually a ref will raise his hand, uh, especially at lower levels. Here's so. Gaw. He looks. He's getting pressured. Down he goes. It's Isaac Hedgewood who gets the sack. And for Hedgewood, that's his first sack of the season. One of the leaders on this Crimson Wave defense. And it makes a big play. And they're going to force a punt. Lots of explosive plays early on in this game for CCSJ. They are playing very well and in sync. And 
They're playing to win a conference championship. So here's the punt. Punt is away. Another decent punt. Fair catch signal by Barbosa. Takes at the 43 yard line. That's where the Crimson Wave will take over with 113 left in the first quarter. All the momentum in this game right now squarely on the side of the Crimson Wave. Certainly would look here if at the end of this first quarter, if they can go and get another touchdown, it would certainly put this Bellarmine team behind the eight ball. So now entering the game is who we expected to see as the starter here tonight. Blaze Kano, although in reserve duty, Carson Crow looked fantastic. Here's Kano, he hands off to Flemings. Flemings cuts right, he's cut down after a gain of about a yard. Tough running, can go right back to the ground. I wouldn't be surprised if you see one over the top catch Bellamon sleeping. So inside of a minute left here in the first quarter. Actually mark no gain there. Kano in the shotgun is two guys to his right, one to his left. Takes the snap, looks left. He's going to fire deep. He's got a man. Oh, but not quite on the same page as it looked like. Marky Whitlock had a step on his man. He was looking inside. The throw went outside. Only to third and ten. Third and long. But I'm sure CCSJ is not sweating any right now. Yeah, they've been able to convert several third and longs so far. So far, 107 passing yards on the game already in the Kano first Kano with the snap fires across the middle and nearly intercepted. He was just a little bit late coming across the middle. It was a nice play coming across by safety Devin Hendricks. That's going to bring up fourth down, but... He had a man there for a moment. That ball came out just about a half second late. Isaiah and nearly led to an interception. CCSJ will see the will be seeing their punt team right now for the first time today. So Jared Sayers back to punt for the Crimson Wave. Hendricks awaits the punt. He has his heels on the 15 yard line, based on. The averages throughout the season might be a little bit bad snap here. Say it's got to recover, and he gets not a very good punt. Bounces at the 32, takes a couple of bounces forward, and goes out of bounds at the 28. And with 25 seconds left in the first quarter, that's where Bellarmine will take over. Bellarmine getting another opportunity right here. Only one total yard for them on the game right now. CCSJ defense has come to play today. They have made it difficult. We'll see what adjustments Bellarmine can make as we move along. 25 seconds ago in this first quarter. Dylan Gaw back in at quarterback in the shotgun. Four wide receivers set, two to his left, two to his right. And Hendricks in the backfield with him. Now showing blitz of the Crimson Wave, and that's going to be a penalty as you saw that blitz started to creep up and the center for Bell Armine, Evan Williams, committed the infraction, so they'll start again first and 15. It's been lots of negative plays early on here for Bell Armine. Another penalty early on. Got to clean it up if they look to get on the board right here. So now first and 15 again, two to the left, two to the right. Brendan Reed in the backfield, flanking Gaw. Again, showing blitz, he'll hand off. Running left is, and is Reed, excuse me. He gets five yards back, back to the original line of scrimmage. That looks like it'll be the end of the first quarter. And after one, it's gonna be a 10 to nothing lead for the Crimson Wave. Looks like the, the Knights are gonna let this clock run out. So after one, a lead for the Crimson Wave. And it was a nicely executed first two offensive dr drives for the Crimson Wave to get him uh, up to a 10 to nothing lead. Yes, special teams getting them started. Offense putting the cherry on top and defense also 
giving it a little whipped cream topping. So we're going to take a break. You're watching the game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Welcome back to game night here in the region. First quarter that was dominated by the Calumet College Crimson Wave. 10 to nothing lead here. Bellarmine is going to have second and 10 in their own ends in their own end, and it's really just been discombobulated on offense. We've seen several penalties. They've been behind the change on every possession thus far. Certainly not the start Harold Davis wanted for his Knights team. Behind the chains and behind the eight ball. Quarterback is running. Dylan Gaw is running for his life. And Gaw quickly gets it to Hendricks, who's hit right at the line of scrimmage, and four or five Crimson Wave tacklers come up to finish him off. He'll gain about a yard and a half, but it'll be third and long coming up. Again, we're having scoreboard issues as it's just completely off at this point. So we'll do our best to update you as we can. I believe at this point the refs on the field will be keeping the time for the time being. Makes it a little bit difficult, not just us broadcasters, who of course are the most important people, I kid, but certainly makes it more difficult for the players. You just tend to lose track a little bit of the situation. And we're going to get a flag here, or just a whistle. A timeout taken by Bellarmine on the third and eight here, which early feels like a little bit of an important play. The Knights have been really discombobulated here to start. Haven't had much go right in third and eight at their own 30. Big play for them. Yeah, big play, and uh, this could potentially be another third down stop for the Crimson Wave defense, which I believe will be their fourth of the game. So the first time out of the half taken by Bellarmine. There's somewhere around 14 minutes left here in the second quarter. Two receivers to the field. Back off to the left of Gaw. So third and eight, this Bellarmine team comes in four and one on the season. We mentioned this is the last regular season game for both these two teams. Got the Hafford's tournament playoffs coming up starting, I believe, next week. With these teams looking to add into that tournament. The win here, so far it's been all Crimson Wave. Again, having clock issues. We're really <laughs> struggling to get much fluidity in this game at the moment. A lot of that having to do with the clock. Kaw takes the snap. He's going to get pressure and roll to his left immediately. He's got a man going down the middle of the field. Almost intercepted. Brian Walker nearly got the interception. Couldn't bring it in. That's going to bring out the punt team for Bellarmine. He is going to be thinking about that one tonight. That would have been a great interception and would have had a great wall built up by his defense. Could have potentially took that back for six. So fourth and eight. Up comes the punter, Thomas Willer, for the Knights. He takes it. Pressure immediately almost blocked. Coming in untouched was Hedgewood. But couldn't quite get to it. Barbosa tried to make a man miss. He ended up going back a yard or two. And the Crimson Wave will start this offensive possession for 31. Ten to nothing Crimson Wave lead here. They're going to come out for their fourth offensive possession. Take a look, see who's coming in at quarterback. It'll be 
Kano once again. We saw Carson Crow the first couple of possessions. He got 10 points for this offense. Now the second possession for Blaze Kano. Kano, four, three receivers set, tight end. He's got Flemings. He hands the Flemings off tackle left. He makes a man miss, runs over another man across the 40, and taken down at the 40, just about a yard shy of a first down, at least second and one upcoming. Great hard running by Fleming. He's their hog. And I, the Knights, they're, they're going to have to wrap up very early, often, and together if they want to stop him. Fleming's the Michigan City High School native. was a standout there. Comes here to this Calumet College team, and he takes another handoff. This time he's wrapped up in the backfield. He'll lose the yard there. It'll bring up third and short. Big game tackling by Bellarmine right there. So third and short, a lot of options in the playbook here for Jason Novak. Coming off a strong win as a CCSJ CCSJ team beating Quincy at Quincy, a 46 to seven score two weeks ago. And the snap, Kano gives a Flemings. Flemings has a huge hole. He breaks a tackle across the 50. Across the 40, finally taken down at the 37. And a big first down for the Crimson Wave into Bellarmine territory. Huge run by Fleming. So the Crimson Wave trying to make this a tidal wave as they continue to press this Knights team. Officially marked at the 38 yard line, first and 10. It looks like whether it's Crow or Kano for this Crimson Wave team, they just keep moving on offense. Antis in the game. Here's Kano, he looks, he feels pressure, he's gonna roll right, he keeps his head up, finds Barbosa at the 20, and inside the 20 to the 18. Another catch for Nino Barbosa. Another first down for Calumet. Into the red zone go the Crimson Wave. They got a field goal last time they got in the red zone. Of course, their one touchdown was about a 35 or 40 yard strike. So 11.25 left here in the second quarter. Kano in the shotgun. Those hard count turns, he hands to a man across the left side, inside the 10 yard line, breaking tackles, inside the five, towards the end zone, and driven out at the two. Well, there's Elijah Antis. Looks like they're gonna mark him down even inside of that point. Almost inside the one. Antis with a powerful run right there, keeping his legs moving even after contact. Knocked down the pylon, but they call him short. And after a good hard run for Antis there, you I hope to see that he gets to finish this off here. He got forced out at the half yard line. We saw a little bit of Antis, a little bit of- In fact, of it's Antis here who's gonna get the direct snap. He leads right up the middle, stood up right at the one yard line, pushing forward. And it looks like they're gonna mark him short. Still no signal, finally get a signal. So no gain there for Antis. Again, they're quickly on the football here. Antis in a short shotgun formation. Now they're gonna slow up just a touch. Here's Antis again going right up the middle and he gets in for the touchdown. Elijah Antis makes it a 16 to nothing lead for the Crimson Wave with 10-14 left in the second quarter. Crimson Wave telling the Knights, we got a little bit of Antis, we got a little bit of Fleming. Which one you want right there? They hit it off to Antis with a direct snap. And he gets in for the score. Christian Price will line up for the point. Oh, Calumet College here early. Christian Price lines up for the extra point. Decent snap, good hold, kick is up, and kick is through. It is a 17 to nothing lead. We're gonna take a timeout. You're watching the game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. 
With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Welcome back to game night here. Remind you that this broadcast is a production of the Region Sports Network. Any other use, duplication, reproduction, or retransmission of the accounts and descriptions of this contest without the express written consent of the Region Sports Network is prohibited. 10-14 left in the second quarter. Bellarmine needs a response quickly before this game gets out of hand. Bellarmine, it seems like Really, the only light of the game came off of special teams early on. So, if the Crimson Wave choose to cover. Taking it at the 15-yard line and falling at the 22 is DJ Griffin. Didn't get it clean on that kickoff return. So, another long field here for the Knights. They'll take over at the 21. Might have spoke for a second too soon on that return. Well, comes Dylan Gaw, haven't not had much success so far. I think you mentioned last possession, only one completion. I think the team's got less than 10 yards. Oh no, it doesn't even have a, com no, no completions, excuse me. I think the team as a whole is possibly negative yards at this point. We'll try to pull up those stats here in a minute. Regardless, it's gotta get better if you're a Knight fan. First and 10th, 21, here's Gaw. He takes the snap, he hands the read, read off left tackle, he breaks one across the 25 near the 30 yard line. Good first down run for the Knights. Good hard first down run right there for the Knights. You talk about as a coach the importance of staying on schedule, that's something the Knights haven't been on any of their first three drives, but of course second and two is a great start for them here. Definitely. I'd like to see them looking to get some momentum. We're probably going right back on the ground. Here's Gaw on the pistol. He's got a couple of tight ends to the right. He surveys. He's going to take the snap. He's going to pitch right. Here's Reed. Reed with some space across the 30-yard line. Runs into a couple of tacklers. Big collision across the 30. But that hit, I believe he'll get the first down across the 31-yard line. He will. So the first first down of the game for the Knights. Get the ball to the 32-yard line. It's been the first first down for quite some time for the Knights. First and 10 at the 32. God takes the snap, turns, he hands to Reed. Reed with a little bit of room up the middle across the 35, pushing forward and brought down around the 38-yard line. Another good first down run for Bellarmine and staying on track here now. Two downs in a row, second and four. That's where you want to be as an offense. Eight twenty and counting left here in the second quarter. Spread formation here, but now two receivers to the left, two to the right. Showing a little bit of blitz coming up from a safety spot is Walker and quickly getting it out on the edge to Hendricks and he gets another first down of the 45. Good call by the Knights. Uh, offense right there with the short pass as Crimson Wave backed off just a little bit, allowing them space to get the first down and some. So we've seen several big plays from the Crimson Wave, but for the night so far, it's been much more methodical, but a much better look on offense here on this fourth possession. First and 10 at the 45. Gaw's got Hendricks and Reed in the backfield. He'll go back under center in that I formation. Multiple different formations for this Knights team as he takes the snap, turns around, hands off. Cutting right is Hendricks. He's going to get across the 45, maybe get a gain of two. 
We'll bring up second and eight. Crimson Wave defense warming right there. Get the stop, limit him to sh short gaining. Second and eight right on the Whiting Oilers logo. Now back to the shotgun. It's been interesting. There have many different formations thus far for the Bellarmine offense. This time a split shotgun look. He's going to turn. He's going to hand to Hendricks. Hendricks hit after about a yard gain and pulled back by Josh Jones. Indianapolis native. Crimson Wave defense getting back to what they've been doing all game. Stopping the run. Great well, play right there. Bring up third and seven and Dylan Gaw now needing to make a play on a third down conversion here to keep the ball for Mel Armine. They'll stay in the spread here again with that split shotgun look. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Reed and Hendricks flank Gaw here on this third and seven, sending a man in motion all the way across the formation. Gaw takes the snap. He looks right. He's going to throw deep. His man's got a bit of space, and a flag comes in. Looked like the hand of Jake Peters was pulling on the Bellarmine receiver. I believe that was DJ Griffin. On the far side, darting down the field. That's going to bring up a first down for Bellarmine. Bellarmine with some gamesmanship right there. They have 14 lined up on the right side of the formation. Come in motion off to the left side as they look for the home run pass on the right. And a fresh set of downs into the Crimson Wave territory for the first time in the game for Bellarmine. We'll go spread look here in the pistol. We'll take the snap quickly, get it to Hendricks in the slot. He catches it, gets the ball inside the 35, taken down around the 34-yard line. Well, second and seven upcoming. And we've seen Hendricks already be heavily featured, the senior running back for the Knights. Came into the game with 258 yards on the ground and much more than that through the air. That'll be Reed dotting the eye of the pistol. He'll take the snap, trying to break through one tackle, but he's dragged down. It looked like Darren Reese got in there to make the tackle for Bel for uh, the Crimson Wave. So third and six upcoming. 4.49 left here in the second quarter. Is, it's been by far Bellarmine's best offensive possession to this point. Gaw comes out here in the spread look with Reed in the backfield. He takes the snap. He's looking left, fires left, through the hands, and intercepted! Intercepted by Quindarius Davis as that ball went right through the hands of D.J. Griffin. And after their best offensive possession yet, it ends in a turnover, and the Crimson Wave will take over at the 30. Great focus right there. I mean, he, if he didn't have that interception, he would have had probably the hit of the year. <laughs> Isaiah, I know you can appreciate that tip drill work right there. When that ball goes off a receiver's hands, the focus from Davis in order to redirect his eyes, pick that ball off, and then he had a man trying to rip it away from him, but he was able to come up with it and set up his offense here, now first and 10 at their own 30. Very amazing play. And as you mentioned, any defensive coach right there, that's what they preach. If there's a ball that's tipped up in the air, go get it. So here's Blaze Kano. He takes a snap, fakes to Flemings, he looks, he's going to throw a wobbler. That's going to be intercepted. Hendricks the other way. Hendricks inside the 30, and that's one that Blaze Kano cannot throw. A big mistake over the middle. And for Devin Hendricks, he won't get many more easy interceptions than that. 
Great job. Uh, that gives Bellamon a little bit of life and some good field position. So back-to-back -back plays, we get interceptions. And with 4-12 left here in the second quarter, Bellamon's going to get by far their best starting field position of the night at the 27-yard line of the Crimson Wave. Here's Goffer. Hendricks, he's an important piece on both sides of the ball here for Bellarmine as he lines up in the backfield. Instead, it'll be Reed that gets the handoff. He gets inside the 25, bouncing off tacklers inside the 20. Finally brought down, just shy of a first down. It'll be second and short coming up. Yeah, the Bellamine Knights have to be licking their chops right here. As you mentioned, best starting field position of the game. It, it gives them some hope. You got to field two down 17 to nothing. It'll be Calumet College that gets the ball to start the second half. A huge moment in the game here to at least get three if you're Bellarmine, but certainly with your eyes on seven. Back under center goes Gaw. He turns, takes the snap, hands to Hendricks. Hendricks cuts outside. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage and falls forward close to a first down. Looks like he'll just be about half a yard short and bring up third and short. Three ten and counting left here in the second quarter from Ray Galvin Field. Connecting the first half and the second half of tonight's game is the Hose Connections Halftime Report presented by Hose Connections Proven Under Pressure. Make sure you stay with us during that halftime. Here's Gauze, takes the snap, hands off to Reed. Reed breaking tackles inside the 10 yard line, finally brought down around the nine. Way to drive your feet, young fellow. Yeah, a couple of arm tackles on the defense from the Crimson Wave, and that's not going to slow down. Big number 34 for Bellarmine, Brennan Reed. This game features backs on both sides that are built like. You know, big backs. And I mean, they're under 175, but they're playing like they're 220, 240. The Crimson Wave are going to take a timeout here, and what I would assume is a move to try to preserve some time on the other side of the whatever possession ends up here for Bellarmine. We continue to have clock issues here, Isaiah. That's something I think we're going to have to deal with throughout the game as. You can even hear our PA announcer announcing. Everyone can kind of disregard what's going on with the clock. It's been a big, a bit chaotic throughout the game. There should be about 2.15 when we restart play. I'm sure at this point in the game, the refs are keeping it on the field and whatever we're seeing on the scoreboard is just cosmetic. So we'll try to keep our eyes there to try to be as locked in and bring you as much as we can. 2.20 left in the half. Yeah, I think they're just going to keep it down on the field at this point. Gaw's got Reed in the backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand to Reed. Reed cuts right, cuts back left up the middle inside the five. And gets tackled around the four yard line, bringing up second and goal. Reed spins his way down about the five. This will be a big stop for the Crimson Wave, but also a big score for the Bellamine Knights. Let's see who digs deeper to get this last play in before the second half. So the official announcement from our PA that the clock is being kept on the field, which is what we suspected. We'll try to Keep you as updated as we can. If I had to guess, it's around 140 left in the half here. Again, man in motion, pitch to Reed. Reed contacted in the backfield and brought down for a loss of one. And a timeout taken by the Crimson Wave. So trying to make a stand here and preserve whatever clock they can. I think it's about a minute 30 left in the half. Again, we apologize. We'll do the best we can updating you on the amount of time left.
But if you're the Crimson Wave here after a pretty good drive from Bellarmine, obviously got the turnover started in good field position. They can at least hold them to three defensively after where Bellarmine started. It would be a big win for this Crimson Wave defense. Definitely, and I'm sure the Crimson Wave, they, they'll respond either way. I mean, uh, they, they've been stopping them all game, and if they do end up getting a field goal here, the Crimson Wave still should feel pretty confident about their chances to continue the dominance that they've exhibited in this first half. So third and six at the five yard line here. About a minute 30 is our guess left in the half. We'll try to get you as updated a time as we can throughout. Here's handing off to Reed. Reed trying to power his way forward, gets down to about the one yard line and stopped. That's gonna bring up fourth and goal and I had to guess here, Isaiah, we're going to see Bellarmine go for it. Got to. And it also changes the calculus a little bit for Calumet, right? They kept taking time out, trying to preserve clock in order to maybe get a possession. But once you're inside your own one yard line, you got to be a little bit careful. You don't get backed up anyway. So they're going to let the clock run. And I'll be honest, really surprised here that Bellarmine's going to kick a field goal. I understand wanting to get on the board. Down 17 to nothing. They're going to at least get three here. Ben Valet is two for four on the season. And a timeout taken shortly before the snap by Bellerman. So two of four on the season is Benjamin Valet. Along of just 33 yards. This should be a chip shot for him as that ball sits on the one yard line. And as I do wonder if maybe Bellarmine's going to think about it here. And they were getting ready to call, kick the field goal, call the timeout. Not exactly sure how much time we have left. I think it's in the neighborhood of maybe 30 or 45 seconds. Looks like the offense and the kicking team is in the huddle right now. So it, it'll be interesting to see what they come out with. Looks like the offense is going to come back out. Here's Dylan Gaughan as the rest of his teammates. Reed and Hendricks. It'll be Reed setting up in the backfield. Hendricks moves out to the left slot. So fourth and goal here. And a timeout's going to be taken, it looks like, this time by the Crimson Wave. So I think they want to talk it over now that the Knights were showing they were going to go for it. Defensively, want to have another conversation about it. Some gamesmanship there. Possibly a decoy defense out there for Coach Novak's team and knowing, knowingly knowing that he would call a timeout and we'll probably see some games and shit from Bellarmine right here. So I believe each team is down to one timeout. It's been a little confusing with the scoreboard and some of the signals, but they're try, trying to keep that up here in the booth as well. 17-0 our score. Big moment for the Knights is at least their last formation, they showed they were going to go for it. And here comes the offense once again with Tonga. They're going to spread it out. On the one yard line is Gaw. He's got Reed to his right. He's going to send a man in motion. Well, it takes a snap, pitches to Reed. Reed with some space, it gets into the end zone for a touchdown for the Knights. And with just a few seconds left here in the second quarter, Bellerman gets on the board. It's 17 to six. Motion left, toss right. CCS defense bit on what could have possibly been a jet sweep as Bellarmine goes with the line of gamesmanship, giving them a toss right. You see Reed in some open space making guys miss, bulldozing into the end zone. Comes the extra point from Valet. A little bit of a high snap, a good hold, and the kick is up and good. So in the waning seconds here of the second quarter, the 17 to seven score will take a timeout. You're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.
Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost, hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more. Visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Welcome back here to this game between Calumet College and Bellarmine. I believe there's about 23 seconds left here in the second quarter. I say I believe because we've been having clock malfunctions throughout the first half, and at this point in the game, the clock's just being kept on the field, so we'll do the best we can throughout the rest of the game to keep you up to date. Alongside Isaiah Gransbury, I'm Max Anderson here on the call for you from the Whiting Oilers Stadium here. Beautiful, brisk Midwest night here. About 50 degrees, just a light breeze. Seen some people in shorts in the stands, so just goes to show you what kind of night, although crazy Midwesterners, sometimes we see people in shorts in 10 degrees. Yeah. As here's the return back. He's got a couple of blockers up the right sideline across the 40. Down at the 38-yard line is Bernard Taylor. And what looked like probably a situation where they were just going to waste the rest of the clock. Now I think there's around 15 seconds. I think they've got a timeout left on the Calumet College side. And maybe they'll try to get into some field goal range. Yeah, on that return right there, it looks like he might have tripped over his own teammate. Had probably one too many blockers. He had a wall of guys there, two <laughs> yeah. or three coming up the right hash. So they'll take over at the 39-yard line. It's, we think, about 15 seconds left in the half. Yeah, I just heard somebody on the field yell 15 seconds, so feel pretty good about that number. We'll probably give the Crimson Wave one or two plays here if they can try to get into field goal formation. Here's Kano, takes the snap. He's going to look right. He gets pressure, steps up, fires, caught across the 30. Inside the 25-yard line, still bulldozing forward. Finally taken down at the 23-yard line. Was Marky Whitlock. A timeout taken. The first down at the 23-yard line, and probably around seven or eight 